What's up everyone? Welcome back to my channel. I'm at home visiting family here in Garfield, Arkansas. I wanted to show you a little bit about where I grew up out here in the middle of nowhere. So this is where I spent a few years growing up out here in the country. We had a little trailer over here, which is crazy. Like I visited probably five years ago and everything was still here and now it's gone. Apparently it burned down. Had a basketball goal in the back wore out the grass so there's just a patch of dirt where I had the goal. Right next door was the produce stand and that's where I grew up working. I would mow the yard, unload trucks, we dug a ditch from one side to the other so they could have water. So this is just part of where I was and it's crazy it's all gone. So this right here is where we first moved to when we moved to Arkansas right around the corner from where the other trailer was. Down this way, you can't see it anymore, the trailer's gone, I don't know where it is, but this is the trailer we, we moved into when we first moved down here. There wasn't any doors between the bedrooms or bathroom. It was just one long hallway. We washed our clothes in the bathtub, hung them on a line outside. And you can see it's just kind of the middle of nowhere. Again, we had a dirt road. I'm gonna go a little bit further down this dirt road. I used to ride my bike down there all the time. There's a train bridge and a creek. And I've got some interesting stories about that that I want to share. So all of these woods around us right now as we're driving are part of what's known as the Pea Ridge National Military Park. So growing up as a little kid here in Arkansas, this meant a lot to me. Um, the first 10 years of my life, my mom and I lived in Tulsa, Oklahoma, but we had to escape a bad situation, so we moved here where my grandparents live. And being a little city girl, I wasn't a fan of the country, but it wasn't until I made a few friends that brought me down here to the creek that I learned about having fun out here in the woods. Now, in the summer, it gets really hot and this water stays ice cold year round. And there are areas deep enough to swim. So we would come down, there's kind of a swimming hole down a little bit further, and we would throw rocks in the water for like 10 minutes trying to scare away the snakes because there's water moccasins and I don't like snakes. Um, something else we did was, as we got into like junior high, high school, we would have bottle rocket wars down here. And in the middle of the night, there's not street lights, so it's pitch black. You can't see your hand in front of your face, which made what we did really stupid because we would climb up on top of the bridge and we would throw bottle rockets at each other. And as you can see, there's no side rails. The railroad ties are a pretty good distance apart. So it's easy to, you know, fall, which wouldn't be good. Um, which leads me to kind of the grim part of this area and what it meant to me. Um, growing up out here in the 90s, I really didn't have terminology to explain who I was or how I felt. So I kind of became an introvert. Um, I ran to sports and religion as much as I could. And when that wasn't really helping or distracting me enough, I found myself here. Usually two to three times a week, I would climb up on that bridge, I would sit in the middle, and I would think about jumping. Um, unfortunately, that's where life leads you when you feel different and isolated and alone. Um, thankfully I didn't. I mean, I'm living my life happy and authentic and I get to come back and relive a lot of these memories now, but that's not the case for a lot of people. Um, right now, there's so many anti-trans legislation bills popping up all across the country and Arkansas right now is one of the worst. Um, the bills have been passed, they're on the governor's desk, he's apparently signed them which sucks because this is a beautiful place to live. So many amazing people here as well. But it's just not safe and that's not fair to us. Um, I couldn't imagine what it would be like if I was a kid living my authentic life now and having that bravery and strength to do so and then being told I can't exist. So, you know, I felt like ending my life all the time and I didn't have those bills against me. So just know that if you're someone that's living in middle America or the South right now, you're not alone. We are fighting with you as much as we can. 
I've contacted the governor. I know so many other people who are. Um, hang in there because I promise you, one day you're not gonna have to deal with that bigotry. Um, you'll be able to live your life just like I am now and get to come back and just enjoy the beauty of the state. It's not as easy to climb up that now as it was when I was younger. But as you can see, it's pretty high up. So it's really stupid that we got bought a rocket where it's up here in the middle of the dark. But we're gonna go to the middle of the train bridge. I'm gonna show you a little bit more. So we're right here on the train bridge and I'm gonna have the camera pan around and pan down. Um, you can see how wide the railroad, part, uh, railroad ties are apart from each other. It's a little dangerous. And if you have vertigo, it's awful to be up here. This is the middle of the Ozark Mountains. It's really beautiful out here. I mean, normally it's not bloomed yet because the winter hit it pretty hard, but it's still really peaceful and quiet out here. You can see all the stars at night. I kind of miss it. So I mentioned at the train bridge uh, about running to religion. And this is the church I attended to. This is where I ran. Um, I was invited by a friend in junior high who lived out here to attend youth group. And he really invited me because in youth group, you kind of broke up into teams and some of the points you could get was by inviting new members. But he also knew I love basketball. So we had our youth group down the road at the Garfield Elementary School inside in the basketball gym. So for about an hour, we got to have open gym and just play basketball before youth group started. But then we still played a bunch of games, had snacks, and then started to dive into Bible study. The more time I spent there, the more I thought maybe I could find answers. Semi, we're right next to a highway. I figured maybe I could find answers as to why I felt different than everybody else. So that led me to basically trying to pray who I am away. I was here all the time. I helped with Awana Club in the summer with the little kids. I was part of youth choir, youth group, Bible studies. Um, yeah, I actually really enjoyed it at the time. I don't think I'd enjoy it now, but this was a big part of my youth. I, I really loved it here. Another big part of my childhood out here is my sister. I know you guys have heard me talk about her in previous videos. Uh, when my mom remarried, after we moved to Arkansas, her and my dad tried to have another little kid. And after a few miscarriages, my sister came along. She was born with hypopostic left heart and spinal bifida, which means she had half of a heart and a big hole in her back, um, like this big mound. Was only expected to live for about three three hours, but she lived a little over five weeks. Um, it's a really tough time. And as a family, we spent a lot of time out here. There used to <clears throat> there used to be a little fence around this area. We would come out here and plant fresh flowers. Probably every week we would just come tend to the garden and, and spend some time with her. Everything's faded now. My mom moved to Missouri. My dad's in bad health, so he doesn't come out here. And now my grandparents are back behind. Um, yeah, it's the first time I've been here in a long time. So this is where I grew up um, during the last couple years of high school. After we left the trailers, this is where my parents found a new place to live. We're about an acre of land here. I'm back now to visit my dad. He still lives here. Um, still not the greatest upgrade from the trailers, but it's a house, so it's better. Um, having a little bit of land here, my dad loves to shoot guns. Um, I know that's a touchy subject, but he works for Daisy BB. So what we do is we shoot like pellet and BB guns. We don't shoot animals. I can't kill animals, but we shoot little targets like bottles or cans or a cowbell in the tree or even clothespins off of lines because my dad still likes to hang up his laundry outline outside to dry. Um, and what he really taught me with was like long distance and a scope on the gun. 
and he would paint a blade of grass, put something behind it so you could see it, and have me shoot it from across the yard. Um, it was a lot of fun, but I'm here to visit him now, so I'm sure he's gonna wanna go out back and shoot those guns. Um, yeah, we're gonna see if I can still do it or not. It's been, we're not gonna say how many years, because it's been a while since high school, but yeah, this is, this is my home. So this is my favorite part about growing up out here in Garfield in the country is Beaver Lake. As you can see it's beautiful and it's a huge, huge lake. It's about 480 miles of shoreline. So there's a ton of different access points. You can get to it from almost everywhere out here. And yeah, we spent all of our summers out here. When I would visit from Tulsa when I was a little kid, we'd visit my grandparents, come out here and hike. We'd come to Indian Creek a lot. This is uh, where we're at right now. And as I got older, when we moved to Arkansas, my parents and I would come out here and camp. My dad loves to fish, so we'd be out here fishing all the time. He has some funny fishing stories that he thinks are great. I don't because I would either fall in the water from the boat or eat the worm because I'd go to cast and catch on a tree. But this, this is where I really grew up. As I got into high school, my friends and I would come out here and hike and camp, explore caves. I had two friends that actually got in a fist fight doing a, an exploring of a cave because one took the other one's hat, put a bat in it without him knowing it. And when he went to put it back on, I forgot the cave, the bat flew in his face. So that was fun. Um, some other really good experiences out here, jet skiing, tubing on the water. Uh, the whole thing that we would do when tubing was, um, whoever was on the tube, you had to hold on no matter what. Whoever was driving, it was your whole goal to just throw the other one off. So that was a lot of fun doing that as well. Um, loved to swim. Was probably in the best shape of my life because of how much I swam here in the lake. But that took some time to get used to because when I was little, we came out here to Indian Creek a little swimming area over there and at the back end of that swimming area to hold those ropes down there's some chains and when I was little and I swam all the way out there my mom came out there to yell at me and told me that those chains hold dead bodies and if I'm out there those dead bodies would swim up and get me so I was terrified of the water and my grandpa was the only one who could get me in it after that but eventually I got over that fear I mean I still don't like not knowing what's underneath me I don't think it's dead bodies I mean there could be dead bodies but I don't think so. But yeah, this is where we grew up. I love being out here. I really miss it. This is totally different than being at the beach in LA. The water is warm. It's just quiet and serene. You can hear the birds. Yeah, it's beautiful. I love it. Hopefully y'all enjoy getting to know a little bit about me and my childhood out in little podunk Garfield, Arkansas. Uh, even though it's a tiny town, there is a lot to show. I just didn't have enough time to show much because I wanted to spend more time with my family. I haven't seen them in years. Um, plus, that's not where I spent all my time. Uh, Garfield had an elementary school, but not a junior high or high school. I had to take a school bus over to Rogers for that. Um, it's about an hour by school bus, but a 30 minute drive otherwise. Um, and it's not a small little podunk town like everywhere else. Uh, Arkansas does have some large cities, just saying. Um, but my high school graduating class back in 2000 was roughly 700 students. We had 3,000 in our school. And we only had one high school then. Now that I go back, there are two high schools and they're talking about building a third. So it just keeps growing, the, the whole area just bigger and bigger. Um, but when we first moved to Arkansas, I misspoke in the video earlier. Uh, we didn't move to Garfield right away. We moved to Rogers. We lived with my grandparents for the first few years. Um, well, for the first year or so. We ended up moving next door because my grandma introduced my mom to her neighbor who actually also worked with her at Walmart Warehouse. Um, so they got married, that's my dad, and we lived there for a while before we moved to the country. Um, and right up the street, I would ride my bike or walk there all the time was the Rogers Youth Center. Kind of like the YMCA, but no membership fees. Walmart pumps a lot of money into the community. So 
I was able to go there and just play basketball whenever I wanted, um, which was really big for me in high school. That's why I really honed my skills because the youth center had some good games going every now and then. Former NBA players, European League players, and NCAA D1 athletes would go there and compete and work on their games a lot. So I got to play against them. And yeah, I got to work at home on my own. It was a lot of fun. It's also where I dunked for the first time on a 10-foot goal. Can't anymore, but I used to. Um, but yeah, that's just all part of my childhood. And... I appreciate you letting me share that with you. Uh, I really just wanted to share that because I may live in LA now. I may have lived in Dallas, so some bigger cities, but I know what it's like to grow up in the South, in a small little country town where you feel completely different and alone because you don't think that anybody else is going to understand you. Uh, but you're not alone. Even out there in the middle of nowhere where my mom was and still is extremely country, she loves me and accepts me as her daughter and she lets me know how proud she is of me all the time. So just because you're in those areas doesn't mean you're stuck there and doesn't mean everybody's closed-minded. So anyway, I hope you got to know a little bit more about me and yeah, I love you guys. Bye.